I have a warning for you today. A warning? <laughs> what does that mean? It's 17 below zero in our studio today. Oh, why? That's what I'm mean. So it will match your chilly personality. It's being fixed right now. <laughs> Do you, I should have worn something under the skirt today. <laughs> Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. Where are the people who are a little bit different? You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. I'm back there in my little cubby hole. I can always tell the energy of the crowd. And I knew I knew this was going to be good because when Fallon uh, walked out just to sit in her chair, y'all <laughs> acted like Cher was here. So I, uh, yeah. <laughs> now, what's going on with that? I mean, what's going on? Look, is it your birthday, my friend? Yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I think he was forced to be here. I don't know. That. No, no. We got to get him a car, get him a cup or something. We got to make him happy. A car well, or welcome a cup. to the Jason Show. Uh, I'm Jace. Let's start with this, my friends. Say it isn't so, Costco. Oh. I know. Oh. I know. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Food court fans are freaking out over the rumor that Costco is moments away from getting rid of churros. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, the churros, Aaron. A po there's, a, there's a lot of problems in the world. This is number four. Yeah. A post on Reddit claims the churros will be replaced with freshly baked cookies. Uh, Come on, how pedet? No, no, no. Aww. Now, here's the deal. They haven't made any official <laughs> they haven't made any official churro announcements, but they did recently add a roast beef sandwich and chicken salad to their menu along with strawberry ice cream. So I, if if we if we hear any late breaking churro news, we'll break into programming. We'll let you know. But right now. Leo, play that funky music. Let's start the show. Here we go. Like the McRib, we only had her for a limited time only. <laughs> One of our last shows together. Say hi to Fallon, everybody. How you doing, love? Great. Not the first time I've been compared to a McRib either. <laughs> like, I, mean... I say that with love. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. I say that with love. How you yes. doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Are you uh, are you all situated with Christmas? All the do you have all the errands? Are you are you are you confident moving into next week? I am. Uh, yesterday, while flailing around my kitchen, I had a bag that hammer hit the elf on a shelf, <gasps> and my daughter freaked out because you cannot touch the elf on a shelf. She's like, she's not going back to the North Pole. Yeah. And I said, it was the bag that hit her, not me. And I stressed out all day. Her name is Sparkle Cow because my daughter named her that. Wait, your elf on the shelf is named Sparkle Cow? Yep. Okay. The, the child gets to name the elf on a shelf and she chose Sparkle Cow. So, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. But, so she'll make it back. 
we let me tell you, Sparkle Cow has been doing the hard work when I am threatening Olive daily. Yeah. Sparkle Cow is heading back to the North Pole tonight, Olive, so get it together. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I've said this many times since we started this mm. in September. We didn't have those in Indiana, no, did we? we? Did not, no, no. We didn't have Elf on the shelf in the 80s no, in Indiana. No, we did not. I know. No. The Elves didn't come to Indiana. They did. They no. Did. They were afraid of Indiana, they were. I think. Yeah. 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 We were in the flyover country. Yeah, so yeah. It was not a spot. Yeah. I, we had, my papa had a spittoon on the shelf. <laughs> like, you know, that was about it. Yeah, what? The same thing. Spittoon, an elf, same thing. Yeah, no. we had a taxidermy deer uh, That's, yeah. and, and geese on the fire. Place. We yeah. had a taxidermy pheasant. Yes, yeah. lovely. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not ready. I uh, next week, you know, we uh, this is our last week of live shows for the year. We'll be gone for a little while. We'll be back uh, January, the second week of January, third week of January. Um, but I'm not ready. You I didn't I, even put up a tree this year, though. We didn't put up a tree. We didn't do anything. But I, I mean, I haven't packed. I need to. I need to oh. find. I, I know. I haven't packed yet. I'm gone for a while. I need to find a tailor. So Leo, take five. If there's a tailor in the Twin Cities that can do a quick turnaround, let me know. There we go. What? I got. I got. Sh okay. I bought these shorts really quick. I got to know. <laughs> this is why I need a tailor. I, you know, I didn't try them on. I hate trying stuff on. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, those will look good. And I bought one of every color. Obviously. I yeah. put them on, and they look like uh, capris on me. Uh, I, they, yeah. They, they yeah. look. Yeah. They look like they look like I'm in an Annette Funicello movie. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, you gotta get. You got to get the chubby shorts. That's the brand. How dare you? <laughs> no, brand, I have some. Yeah, but my husband loves a little thigh to show, and I don't mind either. And that's, that's the brand. You can choose the length. I have a pair. Uh -huh. Let's just say. <laughs> oh, no. You went too short? Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just need a tailor. No, no. <laughs> No. <laughs> so again, Leo, take camera five. Uh, if you can do four pairs of shorts by Friday, I would really <laughs> love you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, look, hey. Christopher Strom's here. Chris, he's too expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. Kidding me? I would give the bill from Christopher would be like eight hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he was considered one of the future big stars in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but now up. Uh, that's all over. Yesterday, actor Jonathan Majors was found guilty of assaulting his ex-girlfriend. Uh, she accused him of violence back in March. Now, Majors faces up to a year behind bars when he's sentenced to uh, come in February. But Disney Marvel, this is where it uh, relates to pop culture. Disney Marvel quickly cut ties with Majors after the verdict came down. If you don't know, if you're not like a Marvel fan, uh, dude plays the villain Kang, the Conqueror, in several Marvel projects, including Loki, the series, and the recent movie Ant-Man uh, and the Wasp, Quantumania. Marvel was also planning a movie focused only on his character. It's not clear yet what's going to happen. See, that's why this is... it's. Uh, if I if I'm Bob Iger at Disney, I'm like, can I not catch a break? You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? It's like more bad news for right. the Mouse House because you've heard me say it. Marvel products have been giving diminished returns. Mm -hmm. There's already upheaval there. No one's. I mean, a large swath of the fan base hasn't liked the recent offerings, and now you got to contend with this. Yeah. If I were them, I would go back, have a meeting, start from scratch. Yeah. Like, just to, yeah. just, to, just to start from scratch. I don't know, bring little, like, baby Captain America or oh. something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> the they did it with the Muppets. Yeah. They, they did Muppet babies. Can't they do? Oh. Yeah, yeah. I think they should do more Muppet, more more Muppet, Muppet babies. More Muppet babies, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. The best idea they've had in years. I know. <laughs> Disney owns them. They don't even know what to do with the Muppets. I love Disney, but again, I don't mind criticizing them. They bought the Muppets, and they haven't figured out what to do with them. No. But again, that's not why you're here. I could do a whole <laughs> hour on that. <laughs> Moving on. Next in the dish, they are two of the biggest stars to ever come out of American Idol. Kelly Clarkson and Fantasia have a hard time actually rewatching themselves on Idol. They talked about that yesterday on Kelly's show. Have you ever seen you on Idol? Do you ever watch yourself on Idol? Like, have you ever done that? I do. You know, a good glass of wine always sends me back. I 
kid you not, yeah. my husband's here. I will literally go back. <laughs> now, and I don't know if you like me, I hate watching myself. I hate With watching passion. myself. But if I've had a good glass of cab, <laughs> um, there's not enough wine in the world to, like literally, I watched it, I watched it, and I found, dude, I feel like if I got through that, I can do anything. I, yes, anything. Give me another. Remember, remember Kelly won season one of Idol, Fantasia won season three uh, of Idol, Fantasia stars, the reason we're seeing a lot of her is because she's starring in the musical version of The Color Purple, which opens on Christmas Day. I remember actually at being at home, voting for Kelly Clarkson on my phone, like waiting where you'd actually call and vote for the Idol contestant. Yeah. Kelly was my top pick and I was at home with my, my senior year of high school and I'm like, oh my gosh, she's so good. I loved it so much. That was back when, again, I've been here at this building way too long. I used to cover American Idol. Oh, um, yeah. It was one of my first on-air jobs. I did movie reviews and I did Idol. And th I remember how giant those nights were. The yep. finales. Huge. It was 40, 50, 60 million people people watching that show yep and I remember when both of them won yeah. yeah also side note if you haven't watched Kelly Clarkson sing with Teddy swims it was a video that came out like last week because you know she does the Kelly Oki. yeah it is one of the best performances I have ever seen. I hope they release it. Their voices together are phenomenal, and it's like on her Kelly Clarkson Instagram page. Okay, I gotta it's go find so it. It's so unreal. Done. Teddy Swims is phenomenal, and their voice, oh my gosh, so good. I'll, I'll listen to it right now because we're gonna go to a okay, commercial. Perfect. We'll be back after this. Back in a moment. Welcome back to the show. Hey, I want to say thank you. You know, I told the story a couple weeks ago. There was a very nice woman. I'll shorten the version of the story. There's a very nice woman in the studio audience uh, that uh, was commenting on our set decoration. And normally when there's not holiday decorations, we call this the tchotchke wall. There are usually vases back there. And this woman, I do a QA and a with the studio audience after the show. This woman raised her hand. I go, yes, what's your question, ma'am? She goes, hi, I would like that vase in your wall over there. <laughs> And I've never had people ask me for furniture. So I said, I said, well, sure. And I, I went over there. It's not my damn money. So I went over there and I just gave her the vase. I just gave it to her. Uh, well, she was taken down by Fox Security, but that's fine, yeah. <laughs> but listen to this. She was so nice. Her family sent me a, a giant uh, box of dog stuff for my dogs. Aww. And it's just, yeah. So thanks to Emma. Robin, thank you guys. That's very sweet of you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Emma. I'll be taking half. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Fallon, Fallon was back there like it was a rummage sale. Yeah. She's like, I'll take this, I'll take that's, that. That's what happens in separation. Half is mine. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. I forgot. We're getting legally separated on Friday. Yeah. Oh. I know. <laughs> let's get started. Uh, let's continue, I should say. Most kids love Disney movies, so imagine how cool it would be if your mom provided the voice for a Disney character, a famous one. Mandy Moore was the voice of Rapunzel in the Disney hit Tangled, but she told Fallon that doesn't mean anything to her son. Watch this. I have a picture here that I thought made me laugh. This is you and Gus posing with Rapunzel. <laughs> yes. Uh, and... and, and from Tangled. Yes. Uh, now, you actually are the voice of Rapunzel. I am the voice of Rapunzel. Did, does Rapunzel know that you're the voice of Rapunzel? I, I believe so, but they are so solidly in character, they're not allowed to break character, that um, there was like not a wink. There was. Oh, no, you're right. There was no acknowledgement. They're, and, they're pros, oh, by they're the way. So Super pro. They can't so break at all, even I for a little bit. You go, you can tell me. What's no, up? no, 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 and no. Absolutely not. But Gus, by the way, could have, he couldn't have cared less. He's like, you're not Lightning McQueen. There's no cars situation. He's not, he's not impressed that no. mom, mom is he the voice of her puzzle. I, I've asked him several times. I'm like, would you, do you want to, you've seen Frozen now. Do you want to watch Tangled? He's like, no, not, no. <laughs> no, it, no interest at all. No, no interest. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Mandy, uh, 
Mandy's making the rounds because she appears in season two of the Peacock hit Dr. Death. Does, uh, does Olive like uh, uh, Tangled? Oh, she does. Olive's at school, so I can share, but she's getting like a four foot tall Rapunzel doll for Christmas. <laughs> That's going to haunt me in the middle of the night. Yeah. I'm going to like walk out and be like, who's in the hallway? It's going to yeah. be Rapunzel. Um, hallway? Yeah. Oh, hallway. Yeah. That thing's going to be by your side table when you wake <laughs> up. Yeah. Great. Yeah. 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 She loves Rapunzel for sure. Next up, uh, we're sticking with late night. Keenan Thompson stopped by the late show with Stephen Colbert for the first time last night. And Keenan talked about his record breaking run as a cast member on SNL. Look. 21 years now. 21 years, yeah. 21 years on SNL. Yeah, How do crazy. you possibly do 21 years? I worked there for one month and my <laughs> bones started to hollow out like a bird's. How do you look fantastic for a man who's been keeping that schedule for thank 21 you, thank years? Thank you How very do you much. Do it? Uh, the black don't crack. Um, <laughs> We know that. Write that down. Black. The black don't crack. Black. Yeah. Don't crack. Well, when do you yep. sleep? Is I guess the question because I mean I've, I've I've learned to adjust to the schedule. You know, it is like a nightly schedule, so I am tired all the time. You, you think about people that work nights; they usually look like tired people. Here, here, here's the cast that you joined with. Yeah. 2003, 2004. Incredible. Rachel Drash, Jimmy Fallon, Tina Fey, Will Fort, Daryl Hammond, Seth Meyers. Chris Parnell, Amy Poehler, Jeff Richards, Maya Rudolph, Rachel Sands, Fred Armisen, Finesse Mitchell, Keenan Thompson. All hitters. Okay, now oh. here's the thing. Yeah. You're not going to hurt anyone's feelings. Who is best? <laughs> They're professionals. No. They understand somebody has to be best. Who did you like I, to work honestly, with? Honestly, I, I give credit a lot to, to my sister, Maya Rudolph. I think she's the most incredible oh, person. There it is. I wouldn't disagree. Maya's up there. Yeah. And Keenan says, uh, right now he has no plans to leave SNL anytime soon. Why would he? Why would he? Yeah, steady paycheck, steady work. He gets summers off. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> Probably. He knows the routine. Yeah. That's the hardest part from everything I've read about people getting into, to get used to the mechanism. He's used to the mechanism. Mm -hmm. His pay probably goes up every season. He's, he's fine. He's also like my favorite in every sketch. So I selfishly hope he never leaves. He's so funny. Well, he said, Maya, off the top of your head, because every generation mm -hmm. has a favorite SNL cast, depending on how old you are. Off the top of your head, give me two favorites of yours. Uh, Will Ferrell for sure is like a top of mine. And then probably Tina Fey. I really did like her writing style. And uh, so those probably my top two, you. I'll do newer, uh, older. I'll do Tina Fey, Amy Poehler, the the, the, mm -hmm. the triangle, Amy, Maya, yep. and uh, Tina. And then older, I, uh, I'm i obsessed with Gilda Radner. Okay. I love Gilda Radner. I think she was uh, probably one of the best to ever come through that studio. Yeah. Her Barbara Wawa, her uh, <laughs> Roseanne, Roseanne, Anna Dana, uh, I mean, just Emily Latella, everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, she's just the best. Next in the dish, a sad update involving singer Celine Dion. It's been a year since Celine revealed her diagnosis with a rare neurological disorder. It's called stiff person syndrome. Um, it can cause muscle stiffness, slurred speech, and spasms. Well, in a new interview, Celine's sister says Celine can no longer control certain body movements, but but she says Celine continues to fight and she hopes to return to the stage in the future. I don't mean to be Pollyanna about this, but I'm going to be. I think if there's anybody that can fight this, figure out a way to fight it and win, it's Celine. Yeah, absolutely. I think she'll yeah. be back. I do. Me too. It's heartbreaking, and I mean, I think before her, the majority of us had never heard of stiff person no. syndrome, so it was like, that's a real thing, and I mean, I hate that she's going through that. It just reminds me, because not to get all woo-woo about it, but whether you're, it reminds me of Julie Andrews, very different, but you're given this gift, you know, you're given this great gift from above of this voice, and you know, with Julie Andrews, she had a, a bot surgery, and then she lost her ability to sing, really, mm -hmm. and then poor Celine, you have this gift, mm -hmm. and, and you can't use it, right. you know, it's like a double tragedy. Absolutely, like, yeah. Because, you know, I, we don't have any gifts. No, we don't, no, yeah, no yeah. we don't, no. From one music diva to another, I told you recently, Cher, is the first solo artist to ever have a number one hit in seven different decades. Only the Rolling Stones have matched that. But believe it or not, there's one honor Cher doesn't have. And Cher let everyone know about it on a recent episode of The Kelly Clarkson <laughs> Show. The Rolling Stones and me. That's incredible. Right, and I'm not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Wait. Are you serious? You know what? 
I wouldn't be in it now if they gave me a million dollars. Are you serious? I'm not kidding you. <laughs> I was about to say something else. <laughs> yes, I was about yeah. to say I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Right. If you ever change your mind, I'm never no, going to no, change if you, my okay, mind. No, no. If you okay, I get. I have things I mean, in my they career can just like go, that. You know what? Themselves. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, oh, God, I oh, the broke table's the mic. Broken. The table's oh, broken great. anyway. Oh, great. It's all right. Uh, it's yeah. fine. Uh, we're getting rid of it next year, so it's fine. Yeah. That's uh, crazy that she isn't in that's there. That's insane. Uh, um, our buddy Howard Stern complains. He can't stand the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because of all the people that should be in there. Right, right. But that's, it's all arbitrary. It's all subjective to the to the goobers that are on the council, you yeah. know, the Jedi Council. But Cher? Cher isn't in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? That's very bizarre. I mean, Dolly was just placed in there like last year. So I think they just wait until, like, they wait forever to let anyone in. I'm like, don't you want them there at the actual event? Yeah. Let them in sooner. Oh, my gosh. I mean, the good news with Cher is she's going to live forever. So, I mean, she'll be That's there true. whenever. That's she'll true. be able to head to Cleveland whenever. Yeah. That's just, that's just scandalous. That's just silly. Next, one of the biggest hits on Netflix could be getting a spinoff. I'm talking about Wednesday. Uh, now, look, no one's denying that it was a huge hit. But work is underway on a new show focused on her eccentric Uncle Fester, played by Fred Armisen. He only appeared in one episode of season one. We don't know a lot about the potential show, only that it's in early development. Season two, by the way, of Wednesday is set to film next year in Ireland. Would it be done by the same people that do Wednesday? Yes. Oh, okay. Because Fester was, has always been like a wacky character, and this show is like a dark, dark take on Wednesday. So I don't know. I do. We don't need this. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Well, well, Fred Armisen does. No, I mean Fred. <laughs> I mean, but really? I, I, we need to know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Escort them out, please. <laughs> no, I. No. So it's a spinoff of a spinoff? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. They're, I, they. I do. No. They need. Yeah. <laughs> It's not, I, 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 I like, I looked, I like, I love the Adams Family. I love, I liked Wednesday. But I, does Uncle Fester have enough of a backstory? I don't think so. I think that they, I mean, I think Wednesday worked because it was uh, angled toward like a younger audience, you know? And I, I don't think Fester would be. So I don't, yeah, I don't know. No, I'm, unless he had like a dark past in like a brothel or something. I, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm intrigued. Yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, Tell me now more. that I laid that yeah. out there, yeah. that could be actually yeah. interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uncle Fester running a brothel? Okay. All right. All right. Sign me up. I'll dabble. Up next, it's the movie that asks the question, what if everything you believed as a kid was real? Ryan Reynolds stars in the new movie called If, about imaginary friends that come to life. Look. This is just so exciting. What is happening? Well, that's a perfectly understandable question, given um, I'm an if. Get it? Imaginary friend? Our kids grew up. So we need new ones. You could save all of us. All of who? And don't say ifs. Let him say it, or I think his head may actually explode. Fine. Ifs. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So. John Krasinski wrote and directed this one about a young girl who tries to reconnect with the, her imaginary friends with their humans. Uh, it opens in May. Did you have any imaginary friends? I didn't, no. Remember, I had a raccoon child, so I didn't need, I didn't need imaginary friends. <laughs> Hashtag Indiana. <laughs> yeah. Did you? What? Did you? No, I talked to myself, though, a what, lot. What'd you say? What were you guys talking about? Keep dating girls until 91. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? Oh, no, you know what I used to... Uh, oh, what's happening? I used to pretend, mm -hmm. like, in the shop... Like, I used to want to be, well, hello, an announcer. So I used to... It, I, in my room and in my in the shower, I would imitate the announcers on network television. Yeah. So I would go tonight on the love boat. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I would imitate. I loved the announcers. Yeah. And then like my favorite show, Dallas. They would you know the announcer would be like next 
on Dallas. Yeah. I, would I would practice that, and my dad, who had 15 reasons not to like me, that was number 16. You know what I mean? It was like, <laughs> oh my, my kids acting like TV announcers. Anyway, <laughs> but look where I, anyway. No, we'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. Stay with us. He's our friend and Project Runway alum. Coming up in just a few minutes, Christopher Straub returns to The Jason Show with a great idea for making homemade ornaments with your kids or just with you. And a little bit later, what are the top, top clips from The Jason Show for 2023 on social media? You might be surprised. We're going to reveal them when we come back. Well, my friends, with less than a week to go until Christmas, odds are your kids have some time off from school. You got to find ways to keep them busy or they're going to drive you crazy. Um, so maybe help them create a gift for a loved one. Uh, and we're going to help you out with that today. Please welcome back to the show with three quick and easy ways to create custom Christmas, Christmas ornaments is designer Christopher Straub. Hey. Hi, buddy. Correct. How you doing? Some of the kids are already at home, so all my, my all the parents and grandparents out there, some of them already have kiddos at home. They're trying to think of things every single day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To keep anyway, them busy. did you hear what I said at the top of the show? I have four shorts I need tailored. How much are you gonna charge me? We'll talk after the show. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Expensive. I told you, eight hundred dollars right cheap. here. One hundred dollars per short, right? Yes, per gonna, leg. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, you doing well? Are you? Are you now? Because I know you're Mr. Fancy and you do all this stuff. Are yep. you ready for the holidays? I mean, who's ever ready for the holidays? It feels like it's at the same time. It's a month away and it's tonight. It's yeah. Like it's it's a weird it's a thing because there, it. it's there's no snow on the ground, but okay. it's cold in here. I, okay. <laughs> I know. I know. I, Row two and three are frozen. They'll be thawed out. They want their the coats show's back. Over. I think they're requesting. Where are we starting, back. my friend? Let's start over here. So this is something that you can do with your kiddos. Easy to make ornaments. Easy to make gifts. That actually, you might have all these things in your home already. So you don't need to run to the store, and you don't need, for the first time ever in, in a segment with me, you don't need to warm up that hot glue gun. Oh. You're welcome. Oh, now, now I'm, I, I know. was looking forward to yeah, using the glue gun with you. But. And okay, and stuff. so what are we right. doing? So we're going to make little ornaments that go on the tree with any of those uh, toys that you have laying around. So right now, these are just matchbox cars. This is a Jurassic Park Jeep. I love one of, that One thing. of my kiddos' yep. favorites. So all we're doing is taking cars, taking, you might have um, jingle bells around your house, and turning them into ornaments. And also, if you have, uh, if you want to, uh, Another idea for gifting is small gifts that can go into boxes and then go on the tree because all you're going to do is take a pipe cleaner, go through the box or go through whatever the toy is, twist it off. Again, this is easy to do for those little hands. And then that goes right on the tree. And you can, like I said, small gifts, maybe small treats can go in there as well. You can also do it as a version of an advent. Right. And you that's... Yeah, correct. Yeah, correct. you can do it as a version of an advent tree, and the little kiddos, or even you know, if right. adults, uh, go up, Jason, get uh, number eleven, and, and yeah. it's like a game show. Oh, every day. I yeah. actually love that turning it into a game. And I will tell you a little a little trick if you're gonna use Matchbox cars, get ones that have either. And this sounds so funny, but have the windows open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or a little a little brace on the top so you can easily go through with your ribbon or your pipe cleaner. Or get a small hammer and break the. Window. A small hammer. Yeah, something Just like that. Just a tiny, <laughs> tiny little And if hammer. you're doing this for adults, make sure there's either uh, dollar bills in here or baby bottles of booze. There's just either one. I like little. that. I like that. Or the, a, little, a little Chanel sample <laughs> fragrance. Oh, look, there. it's a Chanel. That's nice. Yeah. Okay. So, that, so that's an easy one. So now, just uh, on that same theme, but maybe you have something you can't sort of wrap a... Um, a, a pipe cleaner around, take some of your little toys and you can easily use a little eyelet Who? Oh, okay, these are what they look like here. I'll get Yeah, get a shot, Eric. This is one. Um, I never knew that. Eyelet they're called eyelets? Eye, eye hooks. Can you see that? Okay. But um, they easily, they have um, like a screw thread in them. So all you do is twist them into a little the toy. The toy? Oh. oh my. Did, yes. did you? 
Were you watching Hannibal when you did this? Uh, yeah. Maybe. Oh, look maybe. At this. Oh, so these. So how I um, I did this. These are RuPaul little people oh my toys. God. <laughs> There's a drill. There's a drill. And here, then, kids, come here, Susie. Let's drill your doll's head. <laughs> they go ahead and thread that in there and then loop through some ribbon, or you can go on to uh, use those pipe cleaners again and or, or any decorative ribbon and go ahead and make those ornaments. There's a little RuPaul. Yeah. So especially if you're a, a pop. RuPaul a RuPaul with a nail RuPaul. in his head. <laughs> If you're a if um like if you're a pop culture fan, there's so many of these little great collectible um, little people toys. Look at this. Do you know who that is? Yeah. That's cousin That's Eddie. That's cousin Eddie. And then. Yep. Oh, look. Look, Clark. There's Clark. There's Clark. And who? What's? Remind me her name. Her. She's the aunt. Of, uh, uh, aunt uh, Bethany, Bethany that wraps the cat up. Yeah. <laughs> and then she's the one that goes. Grace died over 40 years ago. And then uncle. The uncle goes. The blessing. The blessing. The blessing. The blessing. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Is Rusty still in the Navy? Is Rusty so still in the Navy? Yeah. <laughs> so you can go ahead and play with that pop culture. <laughs> Clark, she wrapped up her damn cat. Yeah. Anyway. And, so, and if you, you know, any of those little collectible things, or um, my kids are really into Mario, you could even build Lego uh, pieces and make those into ornaments as well. I, I got to give you a compliment. Behind the scenes, when we were thinking of booking you, uh, when we saw this. <laughs> You know, we want to get. I went above the line instead yeah, of the. Oh, no, the, but when we saw this, we're like, now there's a fantastic idea, so bravo. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Bravo. Yay! Bravo. More with Christopher when we return back in a moment. <laughs> don't, don't screw with my head. Welcome back. We're here with our good friend, uh, Project Runway alum, Christopher Straub. That's right. You were, uh, well, get to you were sharing some memories. I liked this. You had a little series on your Instagram. Oh, yeah. You were answering behind-the-scenes questions about the production of Project Runway. Because for all of you new folks, he was uh, season six, right? That's right, uh, yeah. Look at me remembering oh, that. I'm so proud of you. I know. Anyway. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but, yeah, if you go on my Instagram, at Schmistifer. Schmistifer. Uh, yeah, you can see some behind-the-scenes stuff. and Because folks have a lot of questions about they the do. logistics and where does this go and how, does it long, how long does it take to tape and all that stuff. And you so do you, all that. I, yeah, lay it all out. Okay, you're putting me to work. What are we doing? Okay, so for our last one, we're going to make little personalized ornaments with photographs. So take a look at that inside there. Who is that? Now, who is that handsome is little that man? Handsome little man. Yeah, there handsome little yeah, man. So there's, there's our Jason show. And so you know what I'm going to do is, look, I have this fancy photo of you this, and Kendall. This is our, uh, this is our Christmas uh, card that we've been sending to everybody. Look at that. There we go. Yeah. Did people already miss their chance, or can they still send in a card? Um, I think it's still going. Yeah, yeah, I think you still can. The executives right now, as these folks are sitting here, <laughs> signing all of them. Uh -huh. That's right, yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut out a picture from this and make, let's, let's cut out a picture of Kendall and make her an ornament. Let's do it, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put you to work here. So here's, here's an easy way to get a little a circle shape is to grab a little glass. A little, a little juice glass? A little shot glass. Okay. <laughs> Hold that down. Hold that down. Wait, there you go. I said juice. Oh. <laughs> to you, it's juice. That's quote, right. Quote. Juice, juice, juice. So all you do is go ahead and trace around that. Show the, show the folks at home. Okay. Trace around Kendall's head. Yep. Or whomever. There exactly. we go. So okay. a little circle. And go ahead and cut, her cut out. on the inside of the circle. So not on the outside. We need it smaller. Inside of the circle. Okay. Well, I, and then uh, you can go, while you do that, uh, you can go ahead from the dollar store or from your any craft store, you can go ahead and get these acrylic ones so they're a little safer for those younger hands. Open them up, and then I'm going to pour in some glitter because we love glitter. Ooh, and offer the glitter. Festive, festive, festive. <laughs> oh, wait, I tried to put the lid on that one. Okay, so I'm going to set this off to the side. And then... We love to decorate. Hello, welcome. <laughs> Well, you're talking. I'm cutting. I know. Okay, there we go. So also, we have little uh, little decorative things as well. So I'm going to go ahead and use my hole punch, my fancy little hole punch here. An audience. I love that you're stepping back like it's going to work. Audience, keep this a secret. Don't tell her. I'm giving uh, Kindle that for Christmas. Don't tell her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> no one, no one <laughs> let the secret out. Yeah. All right, so this part is really important. So you're gonna wanna just lace through uh, a piece of ribbon. Okay. Because that's gonna keep it upright in there. Okay. Uh, Go ahead and curl it. And if you have uh, like photo paper, like photograph paper, yeah. those are gonna bounce back a little better. better than like a cardboard. Okay. But it's easy, you can easily get this in there and then just take a little pencil, okay. kind of open that up. Oh. oh, now I see why photo yeah, paper. Oh, yeah, yeah, because it kind of, uh, you know, uh, crinkles up Kendall just a little bit. by January 15th. <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that, her, is that her timeline? So you open that up, and then all you do... <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be unfolded by the time she comes back. Yeah. By Valentine's Day? Yeah. Just some humidity in there. And all you do is go ahead and pop on that top again. You can add any decorations that you want, and then this can go right on the tree. There we go. He's the best. Christopher Straub, everybody. To check out, to check out all of Christopher's creations, head to ChristopherStraub.com for Straub Mart, is what I yeah, call it. Right. And be sure to follow him on Instagram. What is it, Christopher? Schmistopher. I can never say that. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everyone. That was great. Well, can you believe it? 2024 is less than two weeks away. Uh, and we thought it would be fun to look back at your favorite moments from the past year on our show. So the Jason Show research team <laughs> scoured our Facebook page for a good hour to two hours to w see which segments <laughs> were the most popular with you. So. Let's start with number five, I feel like Casey Kasem, uh, which is becoming number five on the countdown, uh, is becoming a new favorite series. Look, everybody grab a nugget except Eric. I like the boot shape ones. Oh, oh Jesus Lord. They shape like Indiana. Here. Wait, is it Indiana oh, that way or this way? This way. Fallon's right here. That's Louisiana. That's not Louisiana. This is Indiana. Yeah, animal. This is. This is right this is here, right? Did, this is how we did geography in my school. All right, y'all, where are we on the chicken nugget? Look at the nugget, kid. <laughs> Look at the nugget, kid. That was, uh, that was fast food field trip, or as uh, Fallon and I called it in Indiana, geography. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That was our second field trip when we uh, tried all the new dipping sauces at McDonald's. Uh, and I'm not kidding, the best ideas, I've always said this, it, it, you know, or the most simple in television or in radio. Mm -hmm. It's always the most simple concept. Uh, put th uh, three people in a car, put a camera in there, and go eat fast food. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> hilarity ensues, and it's been great. Yeah. It's been, yeah. I was like... Are we gonna do one more before the end of the year? I know, Fallon in the meeting today, she goes, I know we're done on Friday, but are we gonna do one more before I leave? Yeah. <laughs> well, Jason pays for the food. <laughs> yeah, I do, yeah. Daddy whips out the Amex, yeah. <laughs> Moving on to the next most popular segment. This is number four. They both happened in early October. Both Fallon and I shared our best thing ever. Well, mine was the Hamilton Beach breakfast sandwich maker, okay? And Fallon's was the pumpkin sticky toffee cake from Trader Joe's. Now, now, the, let's, let's handle the breakfast sandwich maker. My radio colleagues, Alexis and Holly, everybody laughed at me. They said, no, my, my family laughed at me. They said, you're gonna use that stupid thing once and you're never gonna use it again. No joke, that breakfast sandwich maker, mm -hmm. it's the most popular thing in our office. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, we call it, we call it Cafe Jeff because people come to our office and uh, order up a breakfast sandwich oh uh, from Jeff. God. We have it in our office. So they were partially right. You don't use it. Oh, no, yeah. Jeff, uses, Jeff it. uses it, yeah. <laughs> and that, that stiffy is sti stiffy. Sticky. <laughs> Our 
third most popular segment on our Facebook page happened in April. That's when Kendall revealed her pregnancy on air. That's right. Yes. And. You know, um, I'm not telling tales out of school, nor am I uh, getting too sad here, but any longtime viewer knows our darling Kendall uh, tried for a while to have a baby, and this was very much a, a little miracle baby, and so it was wrapped up in that emotional mm -hmm. gift wrap as well, so yeah, it was, it was a great, great moment, great moment. And now... She has the baby with the most beautiful head of hair on earth. Ever, you know, ever, ever, <laughs> ever. Let's move on to our second most popular segment of 2023. It happened June 19th when I chatted with Misha Johnson about appearing in the new season of 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. Uh, now, we hope to have Misha back soon to get an update on her relationship. And with this look, I love Misha. Misha actually worked here at Fox 9. She was a fill-in traffic reporter. And then she was on the show. She met this guy. Where was he from, Jeff? Israel. Israel. Oh. And we, we didn't even know. I was like, oh, my God, we know somebody that's on the show. Yeah. She was delightful. Now the most viewed segment on the Jason Show Facebook page for this year. We were all shocked uh, that this was number one. It was my interview with a TikTok star on June 9th. Here's a little bit of it. Because I always thought there was nothing worse than being gay in Indiana, but you were gay in Alabama. So I don't know, maybe. So I, it's maybe not I a was gay in the projects. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, Matt, can we Matt you, had one more, you had one more comma than I did. <laughs> I yeah, one more comma. That's comedian Matt Matthews, known for his hilarious videos of life on his farm in Alabama. He was great. He just recently was here doing a live show. He's all over the place. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Back in a moment. Last week, the Jason Show staff shared our latest best things ever, and you all have had quite the response. Chrissy messaged us to say she got the candle warmer that Fallon suggested and absolutely loves it. In fact, she had to order another one. Yeah. Now, Chrissy says yeah. she's waiting to get Aaron's cheese knife. Yeah. That's right. We'll be right back to wrap things up. Back in a moment. Again, uh, we have uh, three more shows left uh, for this year, and then we'll be back, I know. Uh, we'll be back live, live on Monday, January 15th. Uh, Fallon will magically turn into Kindle. Mm -hmm. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a trick. It's a trick. And so, so if you want to be with us, you can get tickets right now to uh, just go to eventbrite.com, search The Jason Show, and look for the week of January 15th. Uh, the week before that, we do have a special series of shows that you'll love. They're brand new, so uh, we're... We'll, we're actually taping one today, so <laughs> you'll you'll uh, you'll enjoy those. That's the week of. So, are you getting ready? Are you how are you feeling? Getting ready to land the plane? I, you know, I'm I'm sad and excited, and we're <laughs> we're ending it we're ending it with a cocktail sesh on Friday. So. That we are. So yeah. So look for those reckless Instagram stories that I will share. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about you using the word excited that you're done with me. I don't. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm excited no, for vacation. No, Stiffy, tell me more. I'm excited just for vacation in general. I'm excited, as we all are. As Not to leave are. you. I know. Tears will be no, shed. No, we're connected forever. That's yes. right. We have, it it's a microphone umbilical cord. There we go, yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow, Stephanie Hansen is here with Christmas appetizer ideas that you're going to love. But right now, that's, here's your mic pack back. Oh, there you. you go. Yeah, I've been holding that for Fallon the whole show. That's oh, how you do it. Get for, I can't I get can't it. <laughs> yeah. Go out there and be yourself. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. <laughs>